Thanks, Michael. Uh, thanks for coming. As you can see, this is a joint work with uh, Christopher Sonnen Schmidt and, uh, and Finn Tarr. Um, so when making comparisons of social welfare or inequality or, or poverty, it is uh, increasingly recognized that, that focusing on, on monetary income or wealth alone captures, uh, fails to capture uh, many important uh, factors. And indeed, uh, recent literature has frequently focused on uh, multi multidimensional uh, methods. For example, a uh, um, number of uh, uh, studies, they have, have applied a, a weighting scheme or a counting approach to, to aggregate across uh, multiple indicators of, of poverty and, and well-being. However, um, uh, the problem is that such weighting schemes, uh, the, if you take another weighting scheme, it, it may also alter uh, the conclusions. So, so in response to this uh, uh, challenge, uh, other contributions uh, um, have, have focused on the development of robust methods for comparison uh, welfare or inequality or, or poverty. And the idea is that these uh, methods, they, they allow for a broad class of underlying uh, social welfare functions. And since their uh, comparisons are robust in this uh, uh, way. And, um, and following a similar work by Atkinson and Young, uh, there is now a, a fairly large uh, literature along these uh, lines. And, and the work uh, I will present today is closely related, inspired by, by this work. However, there is an important difference. Uh, the, the work mentioned here, um, they all uh, apply uh, conditions uh, implicitly or explicitly that relate to specified signs on the second or higher order uh, cross derivatives of the underlying uh, social welfare function. What we do here is that uh, we're interested in, in uh, ordinal approaches. That is, we, we consider problems of making uh, uh, comparisons of social welfare or inequality uh, between populations in situations where we only use the ordinal information uh, available. And that means that uh, we make no assumptions about the importance of each dimension. Um, and in particular, we, we make no assumptions about sort of the complementarity or substitutability uh, between the, uh, the dimensions. So let me first uh, address the issue of uh, making uh, ordinal multidimensional uh, social welfare comparisons. Here there is actually uh, uh, a well-known uh, uh, criterion, a natural criterion for comparing uh, population distributions. And that is uh, population A is better off than population, uh, sorry, population B is better off than population A. Whenever uh, B's distribution can be obtained from A's, by a finite number of uh, shifts of population density from one outcome to another that is uh, better. So this uh, concept uh, is also known as the usual uh, order, usual stochastic order, or, or first order uh, uh, dominance, the natural multidimensional analog to the first order dominance uh, concept. And it's, a, it's an old concept, although uh, uh, perhaps surprisingly it hasn't uh, until recently been used uh, in applied uh, welfare economics. Although the, the, uh, the term first order dominance has been used uh, with other meanings uh, we should be aware of in, in the welfare economics uh, literature, okay? Let me illustrate this, uh, this concept. Uh, let's assume here we have two dimensions and four outcomes. So assume we have a health dimension, unhealthy, healthy, and an income dimension, poor, rich, okay? So this is the best outcome, this is the worst outcome. And we have the intermediate outcomes here. We are not able to, to compare the intermediate outcomes. Okay. And let's consider a, a population. And let's say that each uh, uh, baby face here is ref, uh, representing 10% uh, of the uh, population. Okay. So we can assume we have a population distributed in this way. And, and when can we uh, unambiguously say that we uh, get an improvement? And that's precisely the cases here where we can move a population mass uh, in this way, for example, to, to, to unambiguously better outcomes, right? So that's sort of first order dominance uh, improvement, right? Um, you can, in the, that it is, the challenge is, uh, in, uh, if you have empirical distributions, how to check for multidimensional first order dominance. And there are different ways of doing this, uh, uh, some more computationally demanding than, than others. 
But let me just mention that in, in R and L, uh, this uh, one method was operationalized uh, and applied also to child deprivation in Mozambique and, and, and Vietnam. And there are also other very recent papers uh, uh, that, had, that, that came out recently that, that also use uh, a similar method. So that was uh, uh, the ordinal comparisons of uh, social welfare. However, what is uh, the, the main focus here for is um, the uh, ordinal comparisons of inequality. Okay. So, so, so the question is, uh, when is there more inequality within one group than, than another? Okay. Um, for the one-dimensional case, uh, there has been uh, some, some recent contributions along these lines. Uh, in particular, a central reference for, for our work is also uh, the Allison and Foster Journal of Health Economics uh, uh, paper from 2004. And, and they um, suggest a, a simple uh, and intuitive model for, for making comparisons of uh, inequality with only uh, categorical ordinal uh, data. And Allison and Foster themselves, they, they use an example of self-assessed health. So let me try to, to illustrate the ideas here in a very simplified uh, way. So assume that uh, we have self-assessed health and we have poor health, fair health, good health. And then again, each uh, statement here we can imagine represents 10% uh, of the population, okay? And, and the question is, uh, so population up uh, or population down, comparing these two populations, which one has the most uh, inequality? Okay. And, and uh, the, the, the Allison and Foster's idea is that, well, um, inequality uh, somehow means that, uh, uh, that um, uh, a distribution is more unequal if you can get it from the other by... by, by uh, uh, by spreading uh, uh, population mass away from the center of the, the, the population. And the, the, the natural definition of the center of population with ordinal data is the, the median uh, outcome. And here, both for population up and down, we actually indeed have the same uh, median outcome. And indeed, uh, here in this case, we actually have that uh, population down here can be obtained by population up by, by moving uh, some uh, people or uh, population shares uh, from the median to, to more extreme uh, outcomes. So in that sense, uh, we have a natural definition in the one-dimensional case of uh, more unequal uh, uh, concept using only ordinal information. Okay. So the, the, the question we're addressing in this paper is how to extend this, to, to mul this concept to multiple uh, dimensions. And, and this, is, uh, this is not so easy, actually. Um, so let me go back to, to the illustration with uh, the baby faces again here, because the application we use is uh, a child uh, deprivation indicators. Let's imagine again here we have uh, two dimensions. We have a health dimension and, let's say, income dimension. And we have a, a population uh, 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 distributed in, in this way. Okay. And so uh, here um, um, uh, the, the concept of the, the median can also be naturally generalized to, to multiple dimensions. That is the, the, uh, um, the, the, the profile of the uh, medians of the partial uh, margins. So here we also have, uh, in a sense, a natural center of the, the distribution. Here. And also you can, uh, so, and of course, you can, you can then use the Allison Foster idea of, uh, of uh, making spreads relative to the center of population. Say, for example, you could uh, make a spread like this, right? A median per serving spread, um, uh, which, which would uh, increase inequality, right? However, uh, using only median preserving spreads in the multidimensional case will not uh, provide a useful concept. And the reason is that you will never be able to influence the, the, uh, the outcome of the southwest uh, uh, outcome here using only median preserving spreads to on a biggestly better, on a biggestly worse uh, outcomes. However, there is another operation uh, in the two dimensional case that also, in a very intuitive sense, uh, increases inequality. And that is that if you move a population mass uh, from down to up and a similar population mass from up to down in this way, uh, in this way you will uh, uh, preserve the partial marginals. However, you will uh, increase a correlation between the, uh, the outcomes in the sense that uh, it, if you now uh, uh, perform poorly in one dimension, it will increase the probability that you are poor in the other dimension. Right? And this, is, this operation is known as a correlation increasing uh, switch. Um, so in a sense, we have two operations that intuitively increase inequality. And our main idea is that we combine these two operations uh, 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 and, and in this way provide a concept, a multidimensional concept, or bivariate concept of uh, ordinal inequality. 
So, so our general definition is we say that there's more inequality in population A than in population B if A cannot be obtained from starting with B and then making some operations, uh, some of these inequality increasing operations, okay? Um, there is, however, a, a major challenge, and that is if you have two empirical distributions, A and B, uh, how can you check if you can obtain one from the other by some sequence of these operations? Okay. That is generally actually a tricky uh, mathematical uh, problem. However, uh, at least uh, in this paper, for this paper here, we will uh, only focus on the, uh, the canonical two by two uh, example here. And the two by two case is, 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 is nice because we can, we can provide a set of necessary and sufficient conditions for, for more on equal, okay? So that is essentially, it, it's, it's a matter of testing uh, a system of inequalities uh, uh, is, is equivalent to testing for this uh, inequality curve. Okay, so let me give a numerical example with some of the data we, we have used and analyzed. So here, it's, um, we look at the child poverty in Mozambique and actually, uh, this is the distribution of uh, girls and boys over four possible outcomes. And actually, it's only, uh, this is the, the example here is only uh, for the female-headed uh, rural households, which are known to be uh, 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 vulnerable uh, households. Um, and we have two dimensions. We have a health deprivation. Um, note that no is good here, okay? And we have uh, an important household indicator, uh, san uh, severe sanitation deprivation, yes or no. And again, note that no is the good outcome. And we, have, we, we take the distribution uh, the, of the girls, that is the, the red numbers, and the distribution of the boys. These are the blue numbers over these four uh, outcomes. Okay? And again, the question is, uh, which, uh, can, can we say anything about which, which uh, uh, population has most inequality? And indeed, uh, according to, to, to our concept applied to this case, we actually get that there is more inequality within the group of boys than within the group of uh, girls. And why is that the case? Yeah, the case, the, um, it is because you can obtain the distribution of boys by starting with the distribution of girls, then make a correlation increase switch, and some extra median uh, preserving uh, spreads, okay? So that's an example of, uh, of the kind of uh, uh, relations and, and observations you, you, you can, uh, you can uh, make from these uh, data. So let me uh, uh, spend the rest of the time here to, to give you a, a hint uh, of, of, uh, of the, uh, the results from an empirical application to child deprivation in, in Mozambique. So there we use, um, um, or we use the three uh, binary well-being uh, indicators or deprivation indicators. These are the so-called, uh, some of the so-called Bristol indicators. So we, uh, we um, make use of uh, uh, sanitation deprivation. And we look at the health deprivation uh, only for those uh, preschool, uh, um, preschool age uh, yeah, children. Uh, and that essentially means whether these uh, small children have, have uh, had access to, to the basic vaccines and, and the most basic uh, health care. It's a binary indicator, yes or no. And then for the school-age children, we, uh, uh, we, we look at instead of uh, education deprivation, meaning essentially do they go to school or, or not. So, and we, we, what we do is that we uh, uh, look at uh, different uh, uh, important characteristics. Uh, so we, uh, we look at whether uh, uh, these uh, uh, kids here are, uh, live in uh, urban uh, area res residence or in rural area of residence. We look at whether the uh, household head is uh, male or female, and we look at whether uh, it, it's a boy or, or a girl. Okay? So, so in this way, we actually obtain uh, or, or uh, make eight groups of uh, children, and what we do is then that we compare all these groups of children to, to each other. Okay? And we use data from the uh, Mozambican uh, Demographic and Health Survey, 2003 here. So, uh, from comparing all uh, groups uh, against each other, we uh, obtain uh, various interesting observations. Uh, let me try to explain this uh, figure. So, uh, rural male girl, for example, this means this is a, 
one of the groups, right? This is the rule uh, uh, area of residence, uh, male household head, and then uh, all the girls, okay? And then um, um, if we have a one in the table, it means that when comparing to another group, we have a, a first order dominance uh, relation, multidimensional first order dominance relation. If we have one of the letters A, B, and C, or D, there are not so many, but there are some, we have a uh, more unequal uh, relation observed. Okay. And let me first mention, uh, um, so, so at, at the, the upper part of the table, this, we, we uh, look at the uh, school age uh, children. So it means that the two uh, dimensions we, we, we have here in the data, this is sanitation deprivation and the education uh, deprivation. Okay. And first, uh, you, the first uh, perhaps not so surprising observation is that um, uh, each and every uh, group of uh, urban uh, children uh, first order dominates uh, each and every uh, rural group of uh, children, right? So, so it's a very uh, sort of robust, strong uh, indicator of the, the, the well-known uh, 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 issue that, that uh, the, the children tend to be better off in urban than in rural uh, areas. More uh, surprisingly, perhaps, or less e uh, at least to us, is that um, um, actually when we compare the different rural groups to each other, we get uh, quite a few uh, first order dominances, meaning that there is a substantial amount of uh, between group uh, inequality uh, uh, for, for the different uh, uh, rural groups. Okay. And, and interestingly, if you compare the different uh, urban groups to each other, we never observe the uh, uh, first order dominance. So, so this is only a rural phenomenon somehow. Okay. Also, um, also quite uh, surprisingly perhaps, well, interesting at least, um, is that uh, when uh, uh, looking at the within group inequality, we actually get that in the urban area, uh, we have a larger within group inequality among the uh, uh, households with a female head than with a male head. So it means that uh, in, in the urban area, if there is a female um, uh, household head, then, um, then um, it's not necessarily the case that the children are worse off or best off in the first or dominant sense, but there's more inequality, so some are really good off, some are really bad off, comparison with, with the male uh, household head, okay? And that's actually the case only, both if you look at the groups of, of boys and compared to each other and groups of, groups of girls compared to, to, to each other. Um, so that's some of the, the, the uh, observations that can come out of uh, using a method uh, of this kind. So that was... Uh, what I would like to, to, to mention about the empirical uh, application here. Of course, there are uh, many things uh, we could look at in the future um, or try to improve. First of all, um, um, even though the, the concept here is, is general, for the ge it applies to the general bivariate case, however, we have only worked out an explicit testing procedure for the two by two case. So, so um, uh, more work needs to be done in order to, to, to provide a general testing uh, procedure that applies to general bivariate uh, uh, categorical data. Okay. So that's more mathematical uh, challenge. Then, of course, I mean, the, the data we use here, these are the demographic and health survey data for Mozambique, and they're available for, for many countries and in many waves. So, of course, uh, there are much scope for, for other applications uh, in other countries, for example, uh, with, with similar uh, data. And finally, I um, uh, should also mention that um, although we have suggested here a, a concept of uh, um, ordinal inequality, it's, it's also, of course, possible to, to, to look at other concepts. For example, maybe we would like to be able to compare distributions that don't have an identical uh, median. It's often in these uh, two by two uh, uh, examples that we have here, it's very often the case in an uh, application that the, the, the median outcome is the same. So it's not a big problem, but if you have uh, many levels uh, along the two dimensions, that tends to be a problem. So, so the, the concept will be yes, useful in general uh, for, for, for multi-level uh, uh, data, and therefore you may want to look for, for weaker concepts. It's a very strict, uh, strict uh, demanding test for inequality we, we suggest and apply here. 
Okay, finally, let me mention that the, the full uh, updated uh, paper is available on my uh, web page, and you can also uh, send me an email, and I'll keep you updated uh, uh, on the latest version. Okay, thank you.